Hey everybody, Jay Salen here. Welcome back to Jay Salen Guitar. I uh, haven't really talked about bass uh, much. I'm really just a guitar player, uh, but I got kind of talked into playing bass uh, for this band that I'm in, and uh, we played uh, last summer and uh, had a good time. I uh, learned a lot about uh, a set live setup for bass, and so I'm going to real quick do a video about... Uh, you know, the setup that I have and sort of the things that I went through to get to this setup. And hopefully if you're a very beginner bass player, you know, new to a band situation that this will kind of help you uh, figure out what you need uh, to get started. So uh, stick around. So uh, here's my setup. Uh, we just practice in my garage. I got an old piano over there. We don't use that, but uh, uh, this is my bass amp, uh, and uh, our drummer leaves his uh, drums here. We got a pretty nice drum set, and we've got uh, a couple uh, speakers and a floor monitor, and then we run it through uh, this live setup, which I'm also going to do a video on our live setup. So anyway, this is my bass. Uh, this is a Squire. Uh, Jaguar. Uh, it's a pretty nice bass. It's got active uh, pickups on it. The nice thing about that is that you can uh, plug it right into your DAW if you want to do some recording uh, and you don't have to do anything else to it. You don't have to use a SANS amp or you know mic and amplifier or anything. You can plug it right in and it sounds good like, like it has its own preamps uh, built into it. So this is the amp that I have finally ended up with that is really working well for me. This is a PV um, Max 300, as you can see right there. Uh, it's a really nice uh, amp. Uh, it's a 300 watt, a Max 300 watt. And I've got it set up uh, to come out from its speaker output right here with one of these uh, twist lock type speaker cables. And then I come out to, and this is a quarter inch uh, on the other end. And this is a true speaker cable. This is a really heavy cable. So you want to make sure you get the right speaker cable. And then that goes right into to this. And this is the Seismic Audio SA-115. So it's a, a single 15 inch uh, speaker in that. And a couple little horns. Uh, and then this one is two tens, and then it's got a couple tweeters too. So this setup really works well. And then if I'm playing a smaller venue and I don't want to bring the seismic uh, cabinet, then I can leave that home uh, and just use the PV. And uh, so real quick, we'll do a sound demonstration on this. And then I'm going to discuss, kind of talk about how I got to this point. All right, here it is. Uh, this is just kind of a sound demonstration. It might not sound real good on the microphone on the camera. And then you can hear the snare back there on the drum kit. But, uh, this is just at five. So it's got a little bit of distortion. The gain's set at three. You can overdrive it. It's got this contour button, which I'm not sure what that does. I've got all the, I got the bass, mid, and treble set uh, to uh, 12 o'clock. And then there's a brightness button, which I have pressed, and then a mid shift, which I have pressed too. Uh, it's got a built-in tuner, but I use a, I use a floor, you know, tuner pedal, because then that mutes the bass as well. It's a great setup. Uh, you can get really loud with it. I mean, it's that's pretty loud. That's that's an eight. So I mean, ten. And it stays pretty clean too. It doesn't get real flubby like you know, where it sounds distorted. This is, uh, it's got an input for passive or an input for active pickups. And you definitely want to make sure you use 
uh, the right one. Like I said, this is an active uh, pickup, so you got to have a nine volt battery in this. Uh, the batteries last forever on this thing. I I've, I think I've only changed them once so far. So, and there is a fan in this. So I'll turn the power on. You can probably hear it. It's this thing here. It's it's kind of loud. Some people on the reviews complained about how loud it was. Obviously, in a loud band setting, you don't even notice it. And then this has the tweeter. You can turn the tweeter on and off. And then it has a send for effects and then a foot switch, which I think is because you have an overdrive uh, button here. So maybe that foot switch is to turn that off and on. I'm not sure. Or maybe the tuner. I don't know. And then you can do DI with it and then aux in, which I never use and headphones, which I never use either. Okay, so I'm back down in the studio and I just wanna kinda of go over sort of the process that it took me to get to this bass setup, which works really well for uh, this loud rock cover band uh, that I'm in. And uh, so when I started out, um, uh, this local band needed a bass player and I'm, really not much of a bass player. I'm a guitar player and not even much of a guitar player. So I said, well, I can fake my way. I can play, you know, root notes and things like that. I know my way up and down the neck a little bit. So, okay. And it's really hard to find musicians, especially in a really small rural town like we're in. And uh, they were playing the type of music that I like. And so it was, it was a pretty good fit. And so I realized that I needed uh, to buy some gear. And so I ended up going to guitar centers used uh, used inventory and uh, found this Ampeg BA 210 V2. Uh, and this is a pretty good amp um, for what it is. It, one of the, it says it's a 450 watt amp. One of the problems I had with it was that it, it I don't know how to explain it, I call it flubby. Where the where the like the speakers are, blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's got a weird, not really a distortion, but the it's so it's like overdriving the speakers so bad that they just sound, blah, 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 blah. you know, they've got a really weird sound to them, and so it's it's not a clear, nice, even tone. It's sort of that flubby sound. So and this one kind of had that, but it 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 worked, and so <clears throat> I got this amp. And it does the, uh, you know, it's a 210, just like this one here. It's got the tweeter. It's got, uh, uh, you know, overdrive and things like that in a, in a DI out. And then you can expand it with uh, a bigger speaker. So that's when I got the Seismic Audio uh, 112 so that I'd have a little bit more low end just to cut through the, you know, the drums and the, and the loud guitar and whatnot. So in this amp did pretty well. Uh, until it didn't. Uh, it, the first practice it went fine. Second practice it got, you know, three quarters of the way through the practice and then it started cutting in and out. So obviously the guitar center, you know, they get it in, they plug it in, they boom, boom, boom it works. Okay, great. So we'll throw a price on it and we'll sell it. Um, so this one obviously had something wrong with it. And so uh, I tried a different speaker and it would still cut in and out. So it was something to do with the amp uh, portion itself. And I took it apart to see if there was anything obviously wrong, like maybe a loose connection or something there wasn't. And so what I ended up doing was basically taking the, disconnecting the amp and then buying an amp head and using this basically as a cabinet along with the seismic audio. So then that's what took me to this particular amp head, which is a TC Electronic BQ250 thrust, 250 watt bass head. And uh, it did okay. It was, it just wasn't loud enough, basically. I should have got the 500, they have a 500 watt version of this, which is what I should have ended up getting, um, but I didn't because <laughs> I don't know I get cheap sometimes and don't want to spend a ton of money and it wasn't really that much more to go to the 500 watt so I ended up using this and this is a pretty decent uh, amplifier um, it's got passive active so obviously you can switch uh, if you're using the active pickups 
and then it had the speaker out which is basically what I did and it was it's four ohm and the both the cabinets that I have are eight ohm so then you combine those two and then that adds up to eight to four ohm it's really weird how ohms work they work the reverse of what you think think they do when you combine two eight ohms you end up with four that's your minimum load I I think I'm explaining it right but anyway so I had connected this speaker output into the Ampeg and then chained off the Ampeg into the seismic audio and it was pretty good it was it was you could tell that it couldn't it wasn't loud enough I mean I basically had this thing cranked to uh, 10 and even turned up some of the drive on it too I, there's like overdrive a gain on it so i had, had the gain all the way up the master all the way up everything else was kind of at you know one o'clock or whatever and it just wasn't quite loud enough and i'll show you an example of that real quick here <laughs> So then that was uh, at a festival that we did outdoors. Um, yeah, I mean, you can kind of hear the bass, but you just couldn't hear it. It was, it was like once the band got going, it was, it, you know, the bass was getting kind of buried in, in all that. So then what I ended up doing is uh, I sold the, this TC Electronic Head. So at the end of the, the year last year, because uh, we only played during the summer, so I think September was our last gig. August, September. And so I ended up selling this, the TC electronic head, and then I sold the Ampeg. I put the Ampeg amp back together, listed it as is that it needed work, sold that for next to nothing, basically covered my shipping on it. So I had read about the PV Max 300, and then I uh, ran sound for a concert, and the bass player for that show had, I uh, I think it was this one or maybe the 200 I think there's a 250 watt or something I don't think his was quite as wide as this one and so uh, and it worked pretty good so and then my friend also bought uh, I think the 150 watt version which I borrowed and tried out but it's just not loud enough in a band mix um, a lot of the discussion groups that you go on where you're talking about uh, bass amps and how much power you need, they'll tell you you need at least 100 watt or 150 watt, and I'd say you need at least 300 watt. Um, and I'm not sure exactly how, because it says, and that's another thing you gotta be careful of with bass amps. And amps in general, I mean, guitar amps are usually, if it's a 50 watt amp, it's 50 watts. But with bass amps, it's like, 300 watt is the maximum I think if you add another cabinet so because I have that other cabinet on there now I'm drawing 300 watts where I think if it's not plugged into that cabinet it's it's like half that it's like maybe 150 200 or something like that and I'm not exactly sure on all the math you'd have to really kind of search to go into it but you have to be careful if an amp says 150 watts that's usually like the maximum output that it'll output with an external speaker if it does the external speaker if it doesn't do the external speaker then usually the like if it's 150 watt and you can't expand it then you get 150 watts out of it um, so it's really vague and weird how they rate these things <laughs> so you really kind of go, got to go by ear uh, when you when you buy a bass amp, and you just basically want to buy the loudest amp that your budget will allow, because if you're in, a, especially if you're in a loud rock band, if you're in a loud rock band with a with an acoustic drum set and distorted guitars, you're gonna want power, especially if you're doing outdoor, because our gigs are mostly outdoor festival type gigs 
beer gardens and things like that. So there you go. That's kind of my uh, experience with uh, bass and uh, bass amp and uh, bass setup with a live uh, live band. Uh, hope you found this uh, video helpful, and uh, I'm gonna follow this up with a live uh, how I set up my live setup for the band uh, with some of the gear that I've got and the speakers and, and speaker placement, and mic placement, and things like that. So hopefully that'll be a future. Uh, video. And uh, if you like this content, please consider subscribing and we'll see you next time.